Hi, this is Marcy and David Lynn aboard the sailboat Nine of Cups. This is the third part of a series of videos on repairing fiberglass boat decks. In the first part, David showed how to identify problem areas. In the second part, he talked about how he removes and replaces bad sections of the deck core. In this final video of the series, he'll show you what epoxy supplies he uses, the process for bonding the new core in place, how he uses fiberglass cloth to strengthen the repair, the filling and fairing process, and finally priming the work in preparation for painting. At this point, if you've watched the first two videos, you saw how to cut out the bad sections of the core, fit the new plywood core, and prep everything for the bonding process. In this video, I'll start by describing the supplies I'll be needing. I like West System Epoxy. I've used a lot of other epoxies over the years, and while some were just as good as West System, a lot weren't. And I always know that with West System products, I can trust the results. And I'm not being paid to say this, this is just my own opinion. I also like the measured pump system, which makes mixing the right ratios quick and easy. The biggest downside is that the West System products are usually the highest priced options, but in my opinion, the reliability and ease of use makes up for the added cost. I use the 105 resin. I use a lot of epoxy in different boat projects, so I usually buy it in the Group B size, which makes about a gallon of epoxy. As you can see, I fitted the pump onto the can. It's hot out, probably in the mid-90s, so I'm using the 206 Slow Hardener. It's actually hot enough out that it might be better to use the 209 Extra Slow Hardener but the 206 will be stored and mixed inside where it's air conditioned and I'm hoping that that will buy me enough time with the 206 hardener. We'll see. The epoxy needs to be thickened. Despite what the container says, this is actually 403 filler, which I like for bonding and laminating. I buy the 403 in large quantities and then decant it into this container, which makes it less messy when scooping out small quantities. The 410 filler makes a nice fairing compound. It spreads and fills well and is easy to sand. I use a lot of disposable gloves, wax paper to keep things separated that I don't want to bond together, and craft or popsicle sticks to mix the epoxy. To reinforce the repair, I use fiberglass cloth and tape. This is 6 ounce fiberglass tape and I have it in both 3 inch wide and 4 inch wide rolls. I will also use fiberglass cloth. This is 6 ounce cloth and it comes in a 60 inch width. I'll also be going through a lot of chip brushes. These are 2 inch chip brushes and they're pretty cheap. I buy them in bulk, about 50 at a time. The epoxy drains out of the pump after it's been sitting a while, and before mixing a new batch, it's important to first prime the pumps. I use a disposable cup and prime each pump until the epoxy flows smoothly. This epoxy has to be discarded. When mixing, I alternately pump once from each can. For me, this is a better method than pumping an entire batch of resin followed by the entire batch of hardener. There were a few times when I became distracted and then lost count of the number of strokes of one or the other and ruining the batch. If I always pump one squirt from each, I find it less likely to make a mistake. Once in a plastic cup, I mix it up well. Since epoxy kicks more slowly in a large container, I pour the mixture into a flatter, wider container for mixing the thickener and then dispensing. The plan is to bond the new core to the bottom and the old core. Then I'll bond the top section of fiberglass back in place. This needs to be done with several small batches of epoxy over the course of a few hours. As I'm working with one batch of epoxy, Marcy will mix the next small batch. As long as the previous layer of epoxy doesn't cure before the next layer is added, the epoxy will bond to itself. If it was a cooler day, I might have time to wait between layers, but in this heat, we'll need to be as efficient as possible. To make sure I get the best possible bond, I start by painting the cavity and the bottom of the new core with a coat of unthickened epoxy. 
The unthickened epoxy will soak into the fiberglass and the core, making a better bond with the thickened epoxy. Next, I spread a layer of the epoxy thickened with the 403 filler on the bottom and the sides of the cavity. I make sure to get plenty under the edges. I added enough of the 403 filler to thicken it to the consistency of mayonnaise. Placing the core pieces is the next step. We got a little rushed here and weren't able to show the part where the new core was put in place, but the process is the same as when I dry fitted the core in the previous video. I make sure the gaps are all filled with epoxy, then I paint the top of the new core as well as all the old core with unthickened epoxy. I also paint the bottom of the top layer of fiberglass. Now I'll spread a layer of thickened epoxy over all the new core and any gaps in the old core. The epoxy is kicking pretty quickly in this heat. I have to get the top piece of fiberglass in place before the thickened epoxy stiffens up. The top layer is now on and I'm adding weight to press it down into place. This didn't exactly work out like I planned. I wasn't fast enough so the thickened epoxy set up too fast. The result was the fiberglass didn't bond flush with the surrounding deck. In retrospect, it would have been better to use the 209 Extra Slow Hardener in this heat. This is two days later, and as you can see, it's starting out quite foggy. I had to pull the fiberglass back off, then let the epoxy cure overnight. The next morning, I sanded the filled core and top section of fiberglass until they were smooth, then bonded it all in place once again. This time around, I used wooden strips screwed to the deck to hold the fiberglass in place. Unfortunately, we couldn't video the process of screwing the wooden strips down because I was afraid we wouldn't get the epoxying done before it's set up again, like it did the first time. This is what it looks like after the top layer of fiberglass has been bonded into place and the wooden strips have been removed. This time, it doesn't look too bad. At this point, we could just fair the area and paint it, but we have a butted joint between the old fiberglass deck and the section we replaced. The joint will be weak and brittle, and within a few months, it will begin to crack along the joint line, so we need to reinforce the joint. When I bonded the fiberglass back in place, I ground it down underneath so that the fiberglass section was slightly lower than the original deck. Now I want to grind down about two to three inches of the fiberglass on both sides of the repair. In this ground down area, I will lay down two layers of glass tape. The bottom one slightly smaller than the top one. To bond them in place, I first paint a coating of unthickened epoxy onto the area, then lay the first layer of tape. I use a chip brush to fill the tape with epoxy until it's transparent. When it gets tacky and begins to kick, I repeat the process with the second layer of tape. Once the two layers of tape are in place and have gotten tacky, then I'll lay down two layers of glass cloth following the same process. The process goes much smoother if all the tape and cloth pieces are cut to size and fitted before making the epoxy. Here I'm laying the second layer of tape once it's all in place, I'll wet it out with epoxy, then make sure all the bubbles are pressed out. This is the second layer of cloth. I'm wetting it out with a chip brush. then smoothing out any irregularities and bubbles.
The next step is to apply two layers of fairing compound. Marcy is mixing small batches of epoxy with 410 fairing filler mixed in. For fairing, I like it the consistency of peanut butter. I use a spatula to apply it. I put on enough of the fairing compound so that the entire repair is higher than the deck around it. I let the first layer cure, then sand it down with 120 grit sandpaper until it is level with the deck. The second layer is to fill any voids and divots in the first layer. Once it is cured, it too is sanded. If I did everything right, two coats should be adequate. If not, I may have to apply more fairing compound until I get it right. Once I'm happy with the fairing compound, I use a high fill primer like Interlux Pre-Coat. Since it'll be a few weeks before I begin the painting process, the primer will serve to protect the fair epoxy surface until I'm ready to paint. I hope this was worthwhile watching. In a future video, I'll take on the task of repainting the decks now that they're all repaired. Thanks for watching. To view more of our travel and how to videos, visit our blog and website at www.justalittlefurther.com.